Hi, I'm Seamless, and today is Friday, which means it's time for New How to Bass. And today, I'm going to show you how to make this sound. So this is a fun one. This is another me just trying to do like an all-in harmer kind of thing. Um, and I did kind of do I use some some slightly different approaches to stuff that I normally do. This is a much more smoother kind of thing. But I also wanted to take advantage of of Harmer's very specific talents um, when it comes to screwing with stuff. And in particular, I used the prism, but I also changed the prism size. By default, prism uh, comes with uh, this wave this waveform view. Actually, that way out. This guy looks like, looks something like this. And I decided what I have, I'll just make it you know thicker. And what this graph does, if you're unfamiliar with what Prism does, is that it moves the harmonics around according to this graph, either up or down, depending on what this graph looks like. And much like all the other graphs that we looked at, like the Harmer, the um, uh, the Unison's window, like this guy, which I did nothing to, this is regular Unison, this graph represents the harmonics per octave. So each of these little poles is an octave's worth of harmonics. This is not the most sort of faithful representation, of, especially what we're looking at in the graph here, because this graph here, here shows it in sort of octave mode versus hertz mode. It's just a way of, you know, looking at it either evenly distributed or tonally distributed. Tonally distributed being that there's more space given to the lower harmonics versus the higher harmonics, which is sort of more of a musical look at what the harmonics are doing. And that graph is represented like evenly in this way, but it's not 100% full on. Like, for example, this this is the first harmonic. This is the fundamental lowest one down here. And this next guy is actually this dude here. There's not a single thing happening in between. And the next harmonic has more and is more and more until the next octave, the last octave's worth of harmonics has a half of all the harmonics. So it has as many harmonics as every single octave past it. And actually, if you wanted to add in the next octave's worth of harmonics, that next octave would have as many harmonics in it as all the other ones combined as well. So that's when you look when when you mess around with this one, you're actually messing around with all you know half up or something. Like it, the distribution is less less clear. Uh, but that is also the same case for the prism. So if I were to do this, of course, I'm also automating the prism to shut up after a bit. That's what this particular shape looks like. But if I were to, that's what that basically does. So I decided to make it nice and sort of super thick, but it also shuts up uh, pretty fast, which is what this does. So it starts out being all enharmonic and weird, but then it flattens out to being the correct distribution. And much like I'm actually doing the same thing on the, on the unison, I have it turning off over time, so that the harmonics spend time being in the different non-harmonic position. I mean, it's almost harmonic. It's, it's less than harmonic slightly. But enough time like that that it actually... Uh, they get out of phase and they have a particular sort of tonality to it. But then when they all normalize, when the bring when the harmonics come back, it doesn't reset the phase. They're still out of phase as a result of their time being in harmonic. So while the the last tone is harmonic, it has a particular interesting tone to it, but it doesn't change. It's nice and stable and static for as long as af after I'm holding the note. It doesn't change. It doesn't. There's not continued motion versus if I did not turn off either of these things. Stay on for kind of, a, kind of a while. So that's uh, why I do that. I also have this filter turning on just because, honestly, I, didn't, I just wanted to see what it was like if I did. It sounded kind of cool, so I kept it there. Um, I have distortion on. And I don't think I'm doing anything else. Okay, so actually the, the, the particular mode, particular mode of unison I'm using is a little special. It's not quite as particular as the Hertz mode. It has it has it has a particular um, niche to it that I'm not fully 100 percent on, but I, I do use it for this actually this particular thing. See what 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 we're doing here is that by default it sets it up at 50 percent uh, forward phase over here, but if you bring it all the way down to no phase, you get that kind of lasery thing that goes down. And if you ever use massive with a number of a huge number of uh, units of voices with restart via gate enabled, you would have noticed this happening. So that particular kind of like brassy overtone is determined by how the different starting phases that you can pick. And also.
also to a certain extent is determined by what setting your pitch is at as well. <laughs> So screw around with those particular values. If you're going to mess around with this, this preset, screw around with those particular values to sort of change the overall tonality of everything. Using the prism as well. Prism not so much. That's just kind of the starting off trumpety feeling it gives you. It's got a nice, nice tone to it. I like it. That's what it sounds like. It's a square wave. Anyway, this is not that complicated, but it is it is a very basic usage of some more complicated sort of background concepts, which that was just a, the worst sentence ever. What I'm basically saying is that this is um, a fairly interesting sound, mostly because of the reasons why this happens. Like the, the whole, this is basically utilizing additive synthesis, um, you know, with the prism and then the, the unison settings and, and that kind of thing and the filter even in certain ways, but that's working enough like a normal filter that I don't really care about that. It's more about the prism and the idea that it can move the harmonics around based on the pitch and shade that you choose with that graph that we mentioned about earlier. And they were also, you know, shutting it off over time with this setting. I have it set the tempo and it's set to go and like this, this, what we're looking at right here is as uh, one measure. So it, the faster or slower things are, it'll still stick with um, whatever one measure, like one bar in whatever tempo you're at. Versus if you set it to global and didn't, or rather didn't set it, to, set it not to that. Bleh. If you didn't set it to demo, and then you can uh, set it to a more fixed, a fixed time. Ha. Anyway, if you have any questions about this, let me know. And as usual, have a nice day.